Good day everyone. Welcome to our lecture series on theories of crime causation. I'm going to discuss today the last two groups of theories that, that in our lecture series. The first is the conflict criminology and the second is the developmental theories of criminology. So let's start with conflict criminology. The first theory under this umbrella is left realism by Jock John Lay and Jock Young. It says here that experiencing poverty in the midst of plenty creates discontent and breeds crime. So it starts with relative deprivation. We discussed this in our, uh, in our past videos. Depri relative deprivation is the feeling poor in the midst of rich people. So the, a person uh, a person who has a house in the middle of uh, many houses of billionaires, so he, he will feel uh, deprivation he will feel uh, poverty because of his neighbor so this relative uh, deprivation and that's an example it will breed discontent discon discontent with his situation in the community plus there is no political solution from the government to alleviate poverty in that area so that will be a breeding ground for crime so that's what uh, the left realism theory in conflict criminology says next uh, next, after the left realism, we have critical feminist theory that capitalist systems create patriarchy. What is patriarchy? This is a traditional, uh, traditional system of relationship between male and female, uh, females, in which the males uh, are viewed as superior compared to women. Males are favored in terms of working outside the home while women are viewed as just purely working in the home or deserve to be inside the house and not to work outside so according to these critical feminist theories and criminology capitalism that is our economic system in the philippines in america and so that is opposite to communism uh, breeds patriarchy and patriarchy uh, uh, will result to traditional gender roles that males for muscular works, working outside the house, and women for washing dishes. So these are traditional gender roles. And these traditional gender roles, this patriarchy, resort to gendered crime. Uh, so according to them, that this, this explains the disparity between females and males in terms of crime rates. So this, uh, according to them, that is the, the, the reason why males tend to commit more uh, violent crimes compared to females because because of patriarchy and traditional gender roles and we have also the power control theory by john hagan so it says here that parents work experiences and class position influence the criminality of children then parents reproduce the th the power relationships they hold in the workplace a position of dominance at work is equated with control in the household so the, the parents they work outside then they, when they go to the family they bring those those type of relationships outside the control the, their, their position inside the family and they tend to bring it to the family and apply it so there's a reason that their children are subjected to to control and uh, this will be a breeding ground for crime so the, the the class position that is represents the power family function inside the family that's control so their children uh, will, will be will breed will be breed into crime according to this theory the next we have the developmental theories in uh, criminology the first theory under this uh, umbrella is the self-control theory by Travis Sersky and Michael Gottfriedson says there that the person with low self-control will tend to commit crime when presented with enough opportunity so this theory can be re represented by this graph so the, uh, low self-control is the result of poor parenting so according to his key and Gottfriedson uh, poor parenting will result to to children having low self-control and these if these children if these youth are presented with enough opportunity to commit crime they tend to commit crime so that's according to the self-control theory Next, we have also the control balance theory by Charles Titor. So, control balance theory. So, according to Charles Titor, conformity results when these two elements, that these two elements 
these elements here, the control over others and control one experiences from others. So when they are in balance, so there will be no crime or less crime. But if these controls here, the two types of controls of imbalances, so they will produce deviant and criminal behaviors. So there's a relationship interaction between control over others. So what we have, for example, I control others. Then I am also controlled by others. So if these two types of controls, my control over others and the control that others uh, exert over me, if they are imbalanced, they will result to either deficit of control or excess of control. And they will tend to result to crime. Next, we have the differential coercion theory by Mark Colvin. According to Colvin, high levels of coercion produce criminality, especially when the episodes of coercive behavior are inconsistent and random because this teaches people that they cannot control their lives. So feeling, uh, feeling that you are not in control of your life, so you, you tend to commit crimes according to it. So this is a, a situation or a context that a person will tend to commit crimes. So there are interpersonal control and impersonal control. Interpersonal control, the, 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 this is the control that others exert over us. And impersonal control, these are controls, the, the, the economy, the inflation, the, we cannot control them, but they control us, they control our behavior, they control what we think, what we feel. And if these controls, for example, the, the control of the parents, the disciplinary action of the parents, they are, uh, the extent is high and erratic, uh, inconsistent uh, disciplinary actions, uh, it will result to feelings of inability to control one's life. So a feeling that you are not in control with your life and you will tend to commit crime according to this theories. Last is the age-graded theory by Robert Samson and John Lau. So according to them, in criminal careers, a life event can, number one, produce a transition in the life course and change the direction of the person's life course trajectory. And there are two critical turning points here, which are the marriage and career. So according to Samson and Lau, uh, persons who have criminal careers, the venture into crimes as their careers, there is still hope for them. They can still change in their lives. So if they if they happen uh, to arrive at a certain age wherein they get into marriage or they they get into work, good career, so it will change their lives. So there's hope for them. Basically, that is according to this theory, the age-graded theory that we have different stages in our lives. And for example, an offender is an offender from the age of 5 to 16, but in the age of 20, he finds work. Age of 25, he, he gets into marriage. And these turning points, the marriage, the career, they're the main the two critical turning points in the life of a, of a criminal. They tend to change that criminal. So that's it. Those are the developmental theories in criminology and the conflict and also theories in conflict criminology. Thank you very much for bearing with us. Thank you for listening and watching this lecture series. Have a good day and God bless you.